Hello and welcome to the CNBC Africa special. I'm Ropi Wamadzena and we're coming to you from the Zambali Resort in a windy Durban, KwaZulu-Natal, which has been described as one of South Africa's fastest growing economies. We've been brought here by the SADC region, which is discussing the fourth industrial revolution as a catalyst for significant economic growth across the region. During this highlight special, we'll take you through some of the key conversations and some of the resolutions that have been taken by ministers from across the region. I'd like to welcome each and every one of you and to thank you for attending and participating in this important meeting of the SADC joint meeting of ministers responsible for education and training and science, technology and innovation. We are extremely honored and privileged as South Africa to host you at this meeting. And we are very, very pleased that so many of you have taken time in your extremely uh, busy diaries to be here in our country at this significant meeting for all the peoples of our region. Our country wishes to begin by referring to its recent election to fill a non-permanent seat on the United Nations Security Council for the term 2019 to 2020. As the people and government of South Africa, we would like to express our unreserved gratitude and appreciation to all the SADC member states for the nomination and the African Union for endorsing South Africa's candidature. The joint meeting for ministers responsible for education and training, science, technology and innovation came together in Durban, South Africa to review the progress and implementation of ongoing programs and initiatives in related sectors and in particular in relation to the regional priority agenda around the fourth industrial revolution. As the SADC region aims to maintain its regional integration and economic development narrative, it needs to embrace the fourth industrial revolution and its disruptive effect on all economies. The development of digital skills is paramount and public-private partnerships are powerful levers for change. The dialogue between the SADC um, ministers as a region is quite important because as, as we've been saying that we want to see regional integration. So this helps from a point of science and technology to be able to share knowledge, to be able to share the research work that we do amongst the countries, to be able to establish core values in terms of our skills and especially scarce skill within the region becomes a very critical point and that's why this meeting is important of ministers that are here today. Let's talk about the state of science and technology in South Africa. Um, where are we? How far have we come? Um, we, I think we're doing very well. Not where we want to be but compared to where we come from we've done very well. From 1996, we've established the foundation, we've laid institutions on the ground, established institutions and, and also just policies. Now, with the work that we've been able to do, establishing of center of excellence in various universities, um, research chairs where we have everybody focused on research and development in the country, but encouraging more and more young people and people in South Africa to be innovative and receive support from their country, it's quite critical. So I can safely say that we've done quite very well in the portfolio, but equally, we want to see more work that is being done. When a young person in the rural areas, in the villages, for example, we're in KZN today, somebody in Mshatuz, when they are sitting and saying, I have an idea, they should be able to receive support from us and be able to do what they can do best. I mean, young people are very creative around technology. Young people are able to innovate. So we should be able to create a conducive environment for them to be able to innovate because that's where our economy will be able to grow. Right, you've just mentioned, I wanted to go into um, challenges uh, that are faced within the country and you mentioned a critical one, which is access. Uh, but what are some of the other challenges that you have seen and really are trying to navigate around? I think the other issue from access is the issue of um, funding, 
we're still having a challenge of funding. I mean, when people look at um, science and technology and research and development, they see it as a luxury thing. So when there are priority demanding or challenges, and people are looking at where to prioritize, science and technology and research and development doesn't become an area where people are, are funding, are prioritizing to fund, even in institutions. So. That is a major issue where we want to have a whole country, whole departments, um, all our government institutions, private sector prioritizing research and development and funding for it. But the other issue is to make sure that not only that we become accessible but inclusive. So that it's not only the previously disadvantaged people, but we see more and more young people, women coming through, people with disabilities being included in the science and technology. And that for me, they are still a bit of challenges around that. Yeah, and I'm glad you bring up inclusion because I think one of the key themes that are said to be addressed during these dialogues is the inclusion of women in science, technology and engineering. What do you hope will come out of those engagements and really actionable uh, things that can be done to make sure that inclusivity um, is, is encompassed? Um, one of the things we're looking forward to tonight is to be the signing of the charter um, for women in engineering, science and technology by all the ministers who are here. That is a step I think is in the right direction to be able to encourage women in the region to participate in this field that is previously known as a dominated field by men. So that progress is highly appreciated and the implementation of that charter will be what I'm looking forward to as the Minister of Science and Technology in the country. Right. And then finally, um, the big theme here is the fourth industrial revolution and I just want to get a sense, current policies and plans that um, the department has initiated to make sure that we are not left behind. Um, from a point of science and technology in terms of the fourth industrial revolution, obviously we are preparing our sector to be able to do work. At CSIR we've started the work around fourth industrial revolution where young people are looking at 3D printing. But we're saying let's not see the fourth industrial revolution as a threat only. We're saying see it as an opportunity for us to do greater things around innovation. Being able to create robotics, I mean, it should be fascinating for young children who are in high school to know that that I can build a robot that is going to do certain things in the future. I can be able to create light manufacturing for creating industries. So for me, that is very critical. The conversation has been ongoing, following on from discussions that were held in the country of Eswatini last year. A key component of the gathering this year is to assess the strides that have been made and develop ways that will move the region further towards industrialization. For Namibia, one of the member states, much has been achieved, but the region still has its work cut out for it. As SADC member states, we have come to the realization that it is really important that we look at what will move us forward towards industrialization of our different states. And for us to do that, we are saying some of the critical areas, we've got to look at centers of excellence within our different states. And this center of excellence should not be duplicated. For example, we need to identify within, let's say, a country like Namibia, our universities are known for what specific fields, in which fields are they outstanding. What about Botswana? Where do they outstand? I mean, where do they actually surpass all the others in the region as university? The same to South Africa. So that then we can actually begin to tap from the various, a variety of expertise that exists within our country. But we just don't want to do it in a haphazard manner. And hence the need for proper coordination in the establishment of these centers of excellence, and which I believe going forward will be able to concretize. Secondly, the other thing is actually looking at TVET, Technical and Vocational Education, which all over the world, it has been identified as the main mover of industrialization, the main mover of jobs creation, as well as an important component that could help us address our youth unemployment challenges in our different member states. Again, here we are saying, TVET is a very important area, but we are not at the same level as member states in terms of its development. Now, those who have leapfrogged and benefited, uh, you know, 
in a positive light within TVET. We need to share expertise. We need to share the professional knowledge that is actually driving TVET in some of these uh, uh, states. Take, for instance, South Africa. Indeed, there's a lot that uh, maybe a country like Namibia within the TVET sector we can learn from. Not only South Africa, not only those who are within uh, SADC, but also externally. But within this context, we are looking at how do we, within uh, uh, SADC, uh, begin to share expertise that, uh, expertise that uh, uh, exists within our different states and put it to good use and make it the instrument for our industrialization process. Let's talk about that process further, particularly um, in Namibia. How far would you say um, Namibia has come in terms of the fourth industrial revolution process um, and also within the education system? One thing that Namibia has done with regards to industrialization and digitalization is that there are instruments, policy instruments that are in place. For example, our STI policy is in place. Um, the same applies also for our um, TVET system. There is an act that is driving that. But I must say that we still need to take greater efforts to make sure that we streamline uh, the process of digitalizing our education system. And when I talk about this, I'm not only looking at uh, tertiary education that I represent. Uh, you know, education is a continuum, hence the need for everything that is meaningful and that can be transformative to actually begin at the lower level of education. The tendency in Namibia has been to confine things like uh, learning computing and whatnot to universities. But that should not be the case anymore because really the creative minds is much, it starts much lower. Even at preschool, if we can expose our kids to uh, the use of computers and, and everything else that comes with it. It's important because then you lay the right competences for them to function better as they advance within the, the area of education. But I can say the instruments are in place for us to really uh, hone in on these important areas that will help to move forward our industrialization process. And the good thing also is within SADC, as I said, we are not at the same level in terms of our level of development in this area. And that's the beauty, that's where the beauty of sharing expertise, sharing knowledge uh, through staff and student exchanges could actually happen under the, the SADC protocol on education and training as well as the SADC protocol on science, technology, and innovation. So you've spoken about confinement as one of the key challenges. What are some of those other challenges and really how are you navigating around those? Within SADC, I would say um, the main challenge that we face is funding. Um, one thing that came up in our meeting is that centers of excellence have been identified across the SADC member states. However, the challenge and hindrance, major impediment is funding, limited funding or no funding, to the extent that some of the identified uh, institutions that can drive uh, specific fields that are considered to be critical to the um, advancement of SADC, uh, those programs cannot run because there are no funds. Maybe what is cri critical for us to think about as member states is perhaps as we make our subscriptions, when it comes to some of these critical areas that we consider to be uniform in terms of the needs of SADC, we've got to put aside a percentage of our uh, subscription to really um, drive, like for instance, the centers of excellence. We know that the centers of excellence will move us towards resolving some of the challenges we, ha we have, like uh, climate change, not wholly, but some of it, uh, issues of housing, issues of water shortage, is issues of uh, food security, and so on. If we leave this, for example, to donor funding, it's not right. I believe some of the critical areas that we know are to move our socio-economic development. We've got to take the lead and actually fund them ourselves as SADC member states. And this is why I'm saying perhaps it's time for SADC uh, states to begin to think about putting aside resources that we put in as our membership uh, uh, payments towards what we consider to be our grand roadmap of our critical areas that we, we want our centers of excellence to work on.
After the break, we continue conversations around the fourth industrial revolution being a catalyst for economic growth across the SADC region. Part of the ways the issues around development of skills is the acknowledgement and the creation of partnerships, but also the recognition that it's not just about upskilling the learners. Educators are also in need of the education and the upskilling so that they are too able to impart the necessary expertise to the workforce of the future. SAIS is a South African Council for Educators responsible for all the teachers in the country but also as part of teacher mobility and migration within the, the, the SADC region we are receiving plus minus 21,000 teachers from, from SADC and therefore we need to make sure that when they come into the country they are inducted to suit uh, into our space to be able to deal with our curriculum but also most importantly for us is to make sure that they are, they are professionally registered. We can't be a teacher in South Africa if you are not registered with council and therefore we need to put proper systems into place and make sure that all the SADC countries have professional registration councils so that we can be in a position to link with them with regard to this issue. But secondly for us when you talk uh, issues of industrial, fourth industrial revolution, talking about uh, youth skills and digitization, it means you need to make sure that you have teachers that will be in a position to support curriculum, to support learners across the education system in, 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 in implementing that. Without teachers, you can have beautiful programs, you can have everything, but nothing will happen. So our role is to make sure that through our continuum professional teacher development system that we are running currently collaboratively with all employers of educators, we have educators that are, that are, that are developed. Currently, you have a cohort of learners that are highly advanced with regard to technology, with regard to digitization, but the, we have an aging teaching profession. The majority of our teachers are not yet there. You still you have the young teachers coming into the profession, which are a little bit better, but over 60, 70 percent of our teaching profession is aging. So we need a massive program to make sure that we deal with that teacher development, teacher support throughout their career. Yeah, you speak of this massive program and I'm sure there have been engagements with government in terms of providing those resources. Are the resources available? Yes, already the Department of Basic Education is starting uh, standards for digitization of curriculum uh, across the entire system. That is a start. If we start there, we'll be able to say from the departments of education, already you've seen Gauteng, you've seen Western Cape, are already implementing uh, something around that area. But I, but I guess we need to acknowledge that some of the provinces are moving a little bit slowly because of the priorities. Do you prioritize digitization? Do you prioritize uh, e-learning over basic resources? We've got issues of toilets, we've got issues of infrastructure. So it's, it's, it's those competing priorities in the system that are making other provinces to move faster and others not to move with regard to that particular area. But I think as we move along, we should be able to say and have learning experiences out of this, this particular conference to say, where do we cut to make sure that we begin to really support teachers on this program? South Africa's industrial strategy notes that within two decades, 90% of jobs will require some digital proficiency. Yet, 23% of adults lack basic digital skills. Skills development will of course be key in ensuring that key sectors, which include agriculture and manufacturing, both of which contribute significantly to the growth of the economies in the SADC region, are met. The question answered in the meeting of the ministers is whether this will be possible. So the fourth industrial revolution is both changing 
existing industries, changing their supply chains, changing the way they do things, changing the way they manufacture, but it's also creating new global industries and we're seeing these already growing up. This is a global industry which is going to be worth trillions of dollars and we cannot afford to be left out and marginalised. Victor's already made the point. We dig things out of the ground, we send them to the north without adding value to them and we buy back the technology in his tablet. And we can't afford to let that old colonial paradigm go forward into the future. You find most of the time the policy responds to a challenge, but there are other ways. For example, we could have challenge programs where we can put projects with people that have new ideas or that have foresight on what's coming up so that they can already start working on this. As they are working on the projects, they are also we are also working on refining our policies and adjusting. Like now, we're talking about the industry, digitalization and industry 4.0, which is what's coming in terms of big data. Can we use the data to be able to address specific challenges in terms of the technology? So it's very important to, to be able to find tools that you can use to see what's coming, and that's quite important. Right. Um, I, I like that you bring that up because one of the uh, biggest challenges is getting um, agribusiness um, as successful or as developed as it, we would like as a region. Um, the role that technology can play here, um, how can technology play a role here? Yeah, so, so when you look at agriculture, SADAC has prioritized agro-processing, for example, is one of the ways in which our industries can develop because we have a lot of land and we are naturally farmers but how do we bring in technology so one of the ways is how do we bring in data so for example imagine if we could know when if you have 200 animals or 2000 when each of the animals is sick you can use technology to do that you can imagine if we had a, um, a shop that you are selling produces, you should be able to check, you know, how your produce, the material that you have or the food in the shop is performing, is it overripe, is the temperature right and all that. But also for the farmers, imagine if the farmers could be able to have an idea of how much water is still left in the soil, or you could just go and take a picture of a certain pest and then send it somewhere and then it tells you, ah, this pest is this. For example, we had the four armyworm problem. People could not identify it because you need a lot of training. So the, the technology can help us to address some of those. Then you have smart agriculture where you can apply just the right amount of water for you to grow the crops. Because not all the water that you apply to the plant is going to be used. Some of it just goes away. But how can we use technology to just target the water to the roots and just the right amount, especially in where water is a problem, like you know, in, in most countries, the climate change and all that. So technology does. And then can we have the data for since, I don't know, maybe 100 years to help us to predict what's coming in terms of the future? And that's where the big data comes in. So if you combine all the data from the different gadgets we have, uh, from the different fields, you could actually come up with a prediction of what do we expect next year. And that helps the farmers in terms of forecasting uh, production. It's clear from the conversations that have taken place that there needs to be a greater focus on education and skills development. Policies that are developed within the SADC region around the fourth industrial revolution also need to be enacted at a quicker pace so that the region can be on par with its global counterparts. And on that note, that's where we're leaving it for this CNBC Africa special. From myself, Ropi Wamadzena, and the team, it's goodbye. <laughs>